Ever since I wrote my first line of code, my dream was to code a tech startup from scratch. After I had left my corporate job as a software engineer, disappointed at the lack of challenge and real impact, I figured that the natural next step in my career was to try to build something of my own. But after months of building various different projects, I still didn't have an idea that I thought I had enough potential and I felt completely stuck. That was until a friend of mine from high school reached out to me and pitched this idea of an app that would allow you to organize your entire computer work into these boxes which would house everything from tabs, apps and files. At first I was confused but then I was like, this sounds like a really good idea. And I realized that this is something that just had to exist because I really wanted to use this myself. So after some thinking, I was sold and I decided to scrap all the projects I was working on on my own and joined our new company, Boxio. But little did I know that this was gonna be by far the hardest thing I have ever done in my life. There were many moments when I seriously doubted if it was even possible to make a big vision into reality. What the hell is going on? And to make things even harder, we had to be fast because investors notoriously only want to invest in companies that are able to see results very quickly. I even did all of this while traveling across five different countries. More on that as we go through the story. So in this video, I want to tell you this entire journey of how we built a tech startup in three months. Did we succeed? Am I now a tech billionaire? And of course, what is happening next with the company? But before we get to that, we need to go back all the way to the beginning. So I started working on Boxio in June, but our story actually starts a full six months before that in January. So the situation was that I just left my corporate job as a software engineer. More about that on this video. I figured that since my content business was already generating tons of money, I could use that to give me the time and freedom to work on my other coding projects as well, that I could hopefully turn into a startup without having to worry about income in the meantime. But it turns out, yeah, it wasn't that easy. The original idea that I was mainly working on just wasn't something where I saw enough potential to weren't me spending the time on that rather than just expanding my existing content business. And also building an entire startup on my own, again, turns out was not that easy. So I was sort of in this situation where I was building stuff, but I was still really sort of waiting for the right idea to go all in on. And that opportunity ended up coming completely randomly out of the blue when I met up with an old friend of mine from high school for a coffee where he mentioned that he had this idea that he had already iterated quite a few times and made some designs for it. And he just needed someone to help him build it. At first, I was still hesitant. After all, if I went all in on this new company, I would risk losing tens or even hundreds of thousands of dollars in opportunity costs over just expanding my existing existing content creation side of things. But I knew that at some point in my life, I did want to work on a real startup. And this was by far the best idea I had come across so far. And if they succeeded, the potential would be just absolutely huge. So I informed my friend that yes, I am in. Our first challenge was that my co-founder was based in Finland, where I had planned to spend the entire summer in London. So when we started working on the company, we were working remotely. And to our surprise, they actually worked really well. And it was good practice for remote work in general, because we knew that in the autumn, I was going to be going back to Dubai, which is where I live. Nevertheless, after two weeks on open Zoom calls, I did end up booking a plane ticket to Helsinki for a month, as we figured it would be much easier to build the first version of the app while working in person. So I rented some shitty place in Helsinki, and our plan was to spend 12 hours a day just writing code to get our prototype over the line as fast as possible. And that is exactly what we did. And it turns out that building an app like this from scratch was not that easy. There were so many technical difficulties straight away. For instance, we of course don't have low level access to the operating system of macOS. So we were left to build all kinds of more or less questionable workarounds. For example, we stumbled upon this genius idea of using these things called Apple scripts that basically allow you to give commands in this like really weird Apple specific sort of pseudo programming language, which like, I thought it was a good idea. Okay. But like it wasn't. <laughs> and yeah, it didn't work. So we ended up losing a full two weeks of work as we had to rebuild our entire architecture to use something more robust, like for example, a Chrome extension to speak to the browser and other window management libraries in Node.js. We still have trauma about Apple scripts. But despite this, after all, we managed to get our prototype together and anyone we showed it to was really excited. There was clearly enough interest to warrant us to keep going. But as any entrepreneur would know, it turns out that asking people if they would use your app is the worst possible way to figure out if your idea is actually 
good or not. And the mistake we made is that we relied too much on like asking whether people would use it rather than actually giving it to as many people as possible. Like if you ask your mom if she likes your idea, like she's always gonna say yes, right? Yes, of course, love. I love your idea of an AI powered toilet seat. I would definitely use it. But is that something to rely on? Well, of course not. Your mom, your friends, even strangers will always tell you your idea is good. Not because it actually is, but because they just want to be nice. So while the initial feedback was promising, we knew that the only way to understand if our app actually had potential was to actually give it to people and see if they would actually use it. And it turns out this is where the next set of problems came in. Well, the app worked well under perfect circumstances. Any software engineer will know that the circumstances are never actually perfect. What the hell is going on? Like it's making a sound. What the hell, man? Watching someone download and use our first prototype was sort of like watching a giraffe riding on roller skates on thin ice. The smallest wobble and everything would crash. People were scared to open the first version because like windows would be flying across the screen and stuff. Like, yeah, it was, it was a humbling moment, let's just say that. And it was at this moment when I really started to realize what a ridiculously difficult task we had given ourselves to build an entire desktop app that is communicating with your browser, with your file system, with your app system, like everything all at the same time. I honestly did not know if we could even make this app happen technically, let alone turn it into a profitable business. On top of this, it was now the end of August and I had booked to go and live in Thailand for a month. So we had to now fix all of this while I was going to be working remotely. Remotely. At this point, we realized that our workloads were becoming bigger and bigger and bigger, and we needed help. And this is when we found our third and final co-founder, Julia, to take over all the marketing and operational tasks of the company. And man, was that a massive help. For the first time, we developed a systematic way to start onboarding test users and to collect feedback from them. And we even started having meetings with potential advisors and investors. While I did my best to take some time off to explore Thailand and all these kind of things, most of my time was spent on coding. At least I had a pool to do it from. So on the engineering side, we had to sit down and prioritize. Which customer type did we really want to optimize the app for? And what features did we actually want to include in the first public version of the app? Because one thing we had neglected was focusing on the essentials. We had all these ideas for things we wanted to include, like these nice to haves. At the start, you should not try to fit every feature idea in. You can't because otherwise you will never actually get the software to the point where you can release it to a wider range of people to really start getting feedback. So we made some big decisions and decided to temporarily ditch a lot of very important features and instead we opted for systematically gathering feedback from our users and using that as our guide for what to build next. But most importantly, instead of new features, we focused on making the user experience of the current basic version as good as possible. We created a public waitlist with a form for anyone to sign up as a test user. And honestly, I was terrified. Like, what if no one signs up? What if no one actually wants to use the app that we have been spending the past two and a half months working on? At this point, I had left Thailand and I ended up taking a two-week detour to work out of WeWorks in Singapore. I eventually went back to Dubai and on my way back, I honestly did not know if this was ever gonna work out. But what I did know that I was damn proud of the progress we had made so far in the summer, but now everything depended on if we could get signups for people to use the app. And at first, it was quiet, but then we got our first signup. And then our second, our fifth, our tenth, our hundredth. And quickly we had to close our test user form because we had filled our capacity because at the time we were manually onboarding every user via call. And from our users, the feedback started coming in. But with less than a week until our first public launch, we still had a lot of issues to solve. We had no automatic onboarding flow. We hadn't even incorporated a company yet. And a lot of our integrations were not even approved yet. Freaking Google, like why do you always have to take so long to approve everything? Anyway, and with only a week left until our target date of when we wanted to have this app public, I still did not know if we were ever going to be able to get this over the line in time. So after all the hardship, all the learnings, all the bugs, the errors, the embarrassing feedback, the humbling conversations with other entrepreneurs more experienced than me, at the end of it all, we made it. And with that, this 
is Boxio. It is a sidebar that you install on your Mac or PC that allows you to organize your tabs, files, and tools into boxes you can open and close with one click. When you open Boxio, this is what you see. You can start by creating a box for a project or a task. Let's say for a specific coding project or a course that you're following, for example. Then when your box is open, all your tabs that you open in your browser get automatically tracked inside of the box. And in the future, this will also include files, apps, and other tools that you have open on your computer. And the reason we did this is because the biggest problem that I've noticed in my own work as both a content creator and a software engineer is that there's so many distractions out there. It's really tough to focus on your work when you've got all these different things open on your computer and nothing's really organized. And when I wanna start working on something, I need to manually go and open all the different tabs and files and stuff that I need. But with Boxio, you don't have to do that. Best of all, you get all of these and free updates for the lifetime of the app for a recurring payment of absolutely nothing. That's right, the app is completely free to use. Oh, but Thomas, how do you make money if the app is completely free? So our plan with Boxio is to use a very generous freemium model, where in the beginning, all the core features are completely free with some premium modules that you can pay for if you need them. We're still developing those, so for now, everything is just completely free. But now, I need your help. If what I just told you resonates with you, go download Boxio below. And please, if you know this box, which I guarantee you will not, <clears throat> please use that feedback button down below to let me know. By the way, it's the kind of app you're supposed to keep open in the background at all times. So don't close the app when you stop working because you're gonna lose all the benefits. Just close the box you're in and close the sidebar so you don't have to look at it. The biggest lesson from my journey of building the first version of Boxio is that Building gray software is freaking damn hard. And so this is for you if you're looking to build something like this yourself. Whatever time and effort you think it will take for you to do this, expect it to take five times that. And that is precisely why I love this game. Because I love trying to win the hardest games possible. And believe me, there is no harder game than startup entrepreneurship. Or maybe I'm just a masochist. I probably am. Go try our box here below. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video on my startup journey. I'll see you.